But if you have too much protein, I mean, again, if you have a compromised um, kidney system, you know, too much protein may be a problem because the kidney has to um, eliminate the excess urea. Another one of those, uh, I guess, myths that we need to debunk. There he is. Or, hey, what's up, dude? Sorry. I've been quiet back here just trying to take notes and listen, learn. Um, sorry, not a myth that we need to bust, a question that I have because I see this a lot also. And then I have a follow-up question that's very specific. But um, the, um, the, the saying that, oh, if you have too much protein, it's going to destroy your kidneys or something weird like that. I don't know the exact wording, but I've seen it m many times, but this actually came up this morning because my nephew, um, a teenager, he, uh, he actually is starting to get into lifting and he wants to get in better shape. And so my sister asked like, well, what supplements can he take? And then the, the road went down to like getting more protein and stuff. And then my wife was like, well, he has one kidney. Now he doesn't have any kidney disease or anything. He was just born with one. So uh, with that in mind, should he be careful with how much uh, protein he uh, takes in? And then on the other side, if somebody is totally fine, doesn't have any kidney disease, do they have to limit their protein because it's going to destroy their kidneys? So great question. So I want to be really careful, especially in the, the case of, of your son, just because it becomes different when we're when we're talking about like you know an actual specific case. Mm -hmm. So let me give the broad answer first off. There's no evidence that high protein intakes harm healthy kidneys. None. So if you look at and there was actually a recent meta analysis of this by Stu Phillips. Um, when it comes to healthy kidneys, there's just no evidence to suggest that high protein diets are going to harm them. Um, people have kind of misinterpreted the literature that's out there because people who have kidney disease or renal failure, they're placed on low protein diets, which by the way, um, the literature isn't super clear that low protein diets actually help that much. Um, you know, but it's, it's kind of one of those cases where doctors that, you know, they have to kind of go with that would do no harm sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And you guys have to understand also with the way scientific research is conducted, there's no IRB on earth that's going to, if you go to them and say, hey, we want to take uh, end stage renal failure patients and put them on high protein diets to see what happens. Like, it's just not going to get approved. Like, there's nobody that's going to approve that. Um, there was actually, and I'm going to butcher it, but um, old colleague of mine, Peter Fitchin, he did his PhD at Illinois uh, right across the street from where I did mine. And I believe they took people at, I want to say stage one or stage two of renal failure and had them supplement with 25 grams of whey protein isolate per day. And they found that it didn't really uh, negatively affect them and actually help them recover a little bit better. Because the problem with the kidney disease as well is you're trying to also repair tissue. That, that's part of the issue. And if you don't have enough protein, you can't repair tissue. But if you have too much protein, I mean, again, if you have a compromised um, kidney system, you know, too much protein may be a problem because the kidney has to um, eliminate the excess urea. But that being said, excess glycemia is also a problem for kidneys. Like the, there's too much of anything seems to be a problem for kidneys, Sod sodium as well, right? So let's take a break and talk about one of our sponsors, Piedmontese Beef. Now, the great thing about Piedmontese is they have so many different cuts of steak. We call it the diet steak, where they have low fat cuts of amazing tender beef and high fat cuts of amazing tender beef. Seriously, like one of their flat irons has 80 grams of protein and four grams of fat. You're missing out if you don't get it. Andrew, can you tell the people how to get some Piedmontese, please? Absolutely. You guys got to head over to Piedmontese.com. That's P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E.com. At checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT for 25% off your order. Check the links down in the description below. Head over there right now. Again, I think if we're talking about healthy kidneys, I'm not worried about protein intake. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just not. In the case of your son who has one kidney... I'll give you the scientific answer and then I'll give you the I'm a dad answer. Mm -hmm. So the scientific answer is if his one kidney is completely healthy and shows no um, signs of being compromised at all, I mean, you can live basically like you only need about 20% of one kidney to survive. Like 
the, the bo again, human body is incredible with how redundant it is and how um, how little it needs to actually work and thrive. Uh, so 20% of one kid kidney will do the trick. So if that one kidney is perfectly healthy, there's no evidence out there that a high protein diet is going to harm it. Now, here comes dad lane. If it was my kid, what would I do? Um, I, I think if they wanted to lift, I would probably say that they could still do a relatively high protein diet, but I would probably keep it on the lower end of what's considered high. You know, like the research shows that you get almost all the benefits of high protein at like 1.6 grams per kilogram. So I might keep it there, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and then I would just monitor, you know, I'd make sure that, you know, every six months to a year, they're getting blood work done and, and that, you know, their, their GFR, you know, the glomerular filtration rate is, is still good. And um, I probably would let them live life because at the end of the day, the worst thing for your kidneys is just living an overall unhealthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So if they're resistance training, they're, you know, they're eating, you know, protein, but they're, you know, sticking to kind of a, you know, whole food diet or a healthy diet, that's going to be a lot better than them, you know, limiting their protein, but eating a bunch of crap. So again, it's, it's not a, it's not a dichotomy. There's, there's levels in between that, but I think that a lot of times we get too hung up on a lot of these, these issues where like, you'll hear people say, well, look at the, like there's people out there like Walter Longo or, or others who will say, well, it's protein that's making people sick. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause look mm -hmm. at Americans, they eat too much protein and you can correlate protein intake with all these diseases. And it's like, yeah, where are most Americans getting the protein from, from processed meat, from, from, you know, foods that are very, very calorie dense. Yeah hamburgers and hot dogs and, you know, all these other foods that are very calorically dense that you can't really disentangle the effects of protein compared to overall calories. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not super concerned about high protein intake, especially if the kidneys are healthy. Yeah. He's a, uh, I mean, he's a super strong kid. Um, and I think my, so it was my nephew. Um, I, I don't think he's ever been on a diet, but he's just like a savage. He just, you know, but oh, I'm sorry, your nephew. My, yeah, my no, man. no worries. No worries. Um, but the thing is like, I don't think he's ever been on like, like a, like followed a diet. So this is only going to make him like, just feel better in general. But I just, I did have that question. Cause I was just like, ah, oh, shit, I did forget about that. Cause it's never been an issue before. 